Hello and welcome to a series. I'm not even going to do a let's try because I've been meaning to do a let's try this game for probably too long. It's just going to be a series because I already know I like this game a lot. And I also think it will appeal to uh, my audience if you are checking this out just to check it out. I, I honestly, I urge you to, to watch this series. If you're uh, any kind of fan of my other content, if you're a fan of Caves of Cud, if you're a fan of traditional roguelikes, if you're a fan of tactics games, if you're a fan of any of the like, um, Moonring is going to uh, check all of those boxes for you. And it's also gonna check some new boxes for you. I, I promise you that this game is gonna be uh, your new obsession. Uh, it's certainly my new obsession. I absolutely love this game to bits. It's free, which is absurd. For God's sake, dude, to charge some money for your game. You could have charged basically, you know, anything from like five to 20 bucks I would have paid happily for something like this. But hey, I, I respect the, the the lad or the, the team for, for doing it. They're uh, gonna be making their money from uh, maps, um, like cloth maps of the world and t-shirts. So I'll, I'll see if I can uh, put some uh, money aside for those because they already look legit. Anyway, what is Moonring? Well, let's launch into it. I've already deleted my progress uh you know rip to a, a real one what would you like to call yourself let's call myself big simple for now we can come up with some more creative names in the future i'm gonna be playing very poorly i it's been a couple weeks since i sat down and tried this and and knew i wanted to play more of it i'll probably have to redo the tutorial game's not easy um it's got some uh it's got some teeth and it's got some interesting things. This is not a really traditional, traditional roguelike. Um, it's a bit more forgiving about death, uh, but we'll see what that means. It's a bit closer to um, Caves of Cud role play mode than it is, um, you know, classic mode. But uh, we'll get into it. We're going to talk to Calera here, um, which I seem to recall what it has. A yell, no, uh, target to talk is E. Still no dreams, child. So um, this game's got a novel way of talking. You don't uh, really have like dialogue trees so much as you have, I don't know, you, you kind of probe people uh, almost like a Wikipedia. So we see that dreams is highlighted there so we can ask them about dreams. I saw you just sleep too deeply to recall them. Okay, I'm sure you'll dream one of these days. Try, Don't try to force it if we type in dream again. You'll finally know which god has chosen you. Oh yeah? I actually didn't know if I found that dialogue last time. Finally. You are a little older than most dreamless. Yeah? I wonder what your father would have made of it. Dreamless. Most dream by their 20th year. Apart from the Archon, of course. Oh, Archon, huh? What's that? Archon means well, uh, but they're far too old. Okay, I'm glad they're looking for another viable candidate. Uh, perhaps you should petition. Viable. Well, technically all Archons are dreamless. Supposedly allows them neutrality. But can you truly trust anyone godless? Um, lots of things to ponder here. Godless? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to suggest... Uh, You'll have a dream, and then I won't have to worry, so... Okay, so... Okay, uh, apparently my... The garbage on my desk is haunted. Um, this game has very novel leveling up system. It has a very novel leveling up system, I should say. That is to say, um, you don't really, like, level up at all in this game. Uh, like, at all. Um, instead you gain equipment and you gain favor with various gods, if you wish. Um, uh, judging by the dialogue, um, you might have surmised that there are various different gods and you have the option uh, to, uh, to serve them. Um, they all have different attitudes, they all have different wants and needs and they all offer different abilities to you uh, not just in the form of like skills although that as well but also abilities in the traditional sense of abilities meaning um, strength dexterity um, things like that and so that's how you actually gain stats in this game is by 
favoring gods and by serving them and uh they'll all they all have kind of a double-edged sword in that uh they want you to do certain things but they also don't want you to do certain things and if you do do those things they will become angered and it will it will be not good so it's a similar to like i guess desktop dungeons in that way um desktop dungeons as if you recall uh had a various different gods that all had kind of a uh you know fine print on their favor if if you'll excuse the uh metaphor all right so what are we doing well we're just kind of roaming around right now we're exploring um we have our first bug combat so you might notice this um gridded square around us that is how much noise we're making right now if i was to wait um the square shrinks and so our uh you know our exposure in the world is is, is shrinking and we're making less noise but it's still making quite a we're still we've got like a lot of pr um presence in the world for various different reasons i'm gonna start throwing uh rocks at this lad this this bug and then i'm gonna i'm gonna mash into them and we've gotten some scraps of uh chitin i i still maintain that chitin sounds better but um you found a note the graveyard key is in the locked chest behind the farmhouse's false wall beyond the grave is a cave i hit a, a carved stone within it find the stone find others who recognize its sign and may the gods and my beloved be forever blind signed your loving father Karim. you scribble the message in your notebook we got a tiny key we are slowed um the game uh the game is tough and statuses are kind of everything uh not just in like the statuses that you get from like environmental effects but also the statuses that you maintain for instance if i uh let me see if i go into quiet mode i'm sneaking now you'll see that our uh presence in the world is much smaller in fact if i wait in stealth mode then it gets even smaller and so things will not be aware of us until we are directly next to them if i take a step it, it grows and so yeah um this is a traditional roguelike ish game with stealth mechanics and good stealth mechanics might i add um the key unlocks the chest and it crumbles to dust we've got the graveyard key and we can off we go to the graveyard which is our first official dungeon um we're not really limited to going into the graveyard this is not a linear game by any sense it's a lot closer to caves of cud in um it's kind of open-ended nature so we'll, but we'll go down here uh something i liked to, or you know i was doing um when i was playing the game was uh you know roaming down here and trying to get get as much as possible um and you know then i would try and like jump you know get out with some stuff it's, it almost feels like a um what's the term i i've used it quite a lot actually is uh i can't remember you know close to Tar tarkov but you know basically like it, it's got vibes of of an es escape game you know like you have to kind of get in uh if we die we lose our progress in this dungeon but then we'll respawn uh you know at our checkpoint which is you know at the town we want to refill our lamp so we are refilling i'm in stealth mode you want to take advantage of stealth mode while you can you'll notice this bug here is sleeping if i move next to him uh there's kind of like a, a dice roll there they might get awakened by our presence they might not if we manage to hit them while they're sleeping then we will do like a nice crit. We'll do a lot of extra damage. And so you want to take advantage of those while you can. Because combat is 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 pretty vicious. Um, there's, there's some forgiveness. We'll get into what the forgiveness looks like when we actually get into some combat. But um, you got to take things slow and you have to take, uh, you know, take all of your advantages while you have them. And we got some money. There's a bat. Bat is asleep, still asleep. We are getting very lucky with these. Um, and I'm just gonna wait. Oh look! I, I, wow, our um, 
when we're i guess when we're in grass we're like basically invisible now you got to be careful there are actually other creatures roaming around in the grass as well and sometimes they can sneak up on you um other creatures also sneak in this game it's not just you find the pressure plate that generally means that's kind of like a shortcut we if we find the way around to the other side of that door then we'll be able to open it and it serves as a as a checkpoint so i'm just gonna i'm just you know sneaking around we got a rock rocks are good they're ammunition for our sling uh we're kind of given a, a little bit of supplies when we start the game range is decent it's a good way of uh there we go so there's a, there's another example of like a kind of a shortcut and we could maybe get you know when when we when we need to run we will have a shorter way to to get there let's um oh friendly fire is on i don't want that i want to do range sneak is off so you might notice yeah when when you actually like engage in combat <clears throat> you um you are no longer sleeping and or sneaking sorry and um wow this guy is dodging all of our attacks i'm actually gonna wait there we go and so you are like the most visible the most exposed that you can be um we want to go back in sneaking mode in fact you might have even noticed that while we're not in sneaking mode we're even like cutting grass so it's like you know the the, the polar opposite of our kind of sneaking mode is we're, we're actually like removing viable sneaky grass in the world now, I'm a little bit worried. There's a, one lad down in this dungeon that if I encounter, I, I basically die every single time. I managed to escape from them exactly once and, uh, you know, get out of the dungeon. But if we encounter them, then I'm, I'm screwed, basically. Uh, they are really, really tough. They are a bug. Okay, let's, let's hang out in this grass and then hopefully we can catch them off guard doesn't seem like it though maybe we can get into that other grass let's wait for them to get close to us and then we catch them off guard and do a critical hit now when you take damage you actually have um kind of like a i don't know how to put it it's kind of like a shield system um but you have like an armor system your armor comes back um, so it, it, it rejuvenates and, and in that way the game is actually very forgiving um, However, when it disappears the and then you you must you know be afraid basically because your health does not recover so quickly and so easily um, And so you you really got to be mindful of that um, There's almost like a real-time aspect of the game like if I step in that webbing uh, and I'll show show me that like I'm slowed for a certain amount of time you'll might you might actually notice that that You know that'll mean that the the world gets to move a little bit without you without your consent So you have to be a little bit mindful of that Okay, that's the uh, that right there. That's the lad I was talking about So we run from that and I'm really hoping that they don't, they're, they're kind of uh, heading towards me and that makes me a little bit worried. I'm, I'm gonna run from that as quickly as I can. I can't take that thing. It, it's just really, really effective at killing me. And so I'm actually going to escape. That was quite good. Uh, we made out with quite a lot of goodies and that's good. I haven't managed to really like make much progress in this game and i also wanted to save a lot of my like um blind impressions a lot of the surprises for when i did a series and so i've been i've been really looking forward to this i'm i'm hoping that uh this finds its audience that the people people who enjoy traditional roguelikes give this series a chance and uh you know uh hang out with me for the ride because I think this game is very worth it. I think it's one of the most like promising little games I've, I've come across in a while. Um, let me see here. Do uh, what do I want to do? I mean, I set a checkpoint. So what I could do is actually just head right back into the dungeon. 
do a couple dives the dungeon is randomly generated so like once i had once i left it that was kind of it right like that dungeon there that uh any progress i made is gone so if i go d back down it's going to be a completely different generation oh wait am i comp am i am i wrong about that maybe it's just it just regenerates if i die in it okay that's interesting actually so yeah i, I i've learned something i guess it only kind of collapses if you die well okay with that in mind maybe i want to leave and um make my way out in the world um you're gonna see what that means i'm gonna turn sneak mode off because that it really does slow you down and uh so yeah here's the here's the overworld um there's a few things to be mindful in the overworld. It's, it is, you know, wrought with dangers. Uh, we have almost like a, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's like a JRPG meets traditional roguelike. Uh, and I really, really dig it. I'd love to see other games do this where basically you have an overworld with monsters roaming around. And then when you encounter said monster, uh, it basically brings you into that tile so i'm now in the tile that i was i was in on the overworld like there there is continuity here right it's not just like a random battlefield i'm in the tile that i was uh my my character was on but now we're we're facing off with the creature that was on the overworld we're taking some damage that's fine and uh there's actually some really good reasons to hang out in these tiles in fact there's reasons to explore a lot of tiles there's um you know, there'll, there'll be uh, random kind of animal creatures that you can hunt for food and for uh, pelts. And, uh, you know, there's there's a lot of reasons to explore. So you'll see Northeast Yarrow Farm. By the way, this overworld, like Caves of Cud, is uh, consistent every single game. And that's why, uh, you know, the, the creator has a lot of uh, love for this world that they've crafted. And they're going to be doing some cloth maps. And uh, I'm I'm actually really excited to hear uh, hear that. Like I, I think that that's a great way of doing things. Make the game free. You know, get people really like kind of attached to that world, and then sell merch um, to kind of like celebrate that world. Uh, I still maintain they could have absolutely charged for this game, but um, just because they didn't doesn't mean they're not going to do updates. They've already released a couple of updates. What do you mean that? Can I, can I go, I can't go diagonally, by the way. I'm not using the numpad. Can I do exchange? No, I can't do exchange. Blocked. Wow, that, uh, that food there is kind of lost, huh? That sucks. Badger fleas. Okay, well, we missed out on some food. If I explore around in the, um, the forest, by the way, there'll be like herbs and stuff. This is a rough tile. The bugs are a little bit tricky but we managed to like sneak into that grass and uh you know they'll they'll kind of lose track of you but you can catch them off guard oh we got a we got an animal i'll go and grab this animal animals are just there for hunting they'll give you some some pelts and some meat um you'll want to you want to gather some food for the purposes of uh you know feeding yourself of course there is some like survival aspects in this game. Ouch, we took some, our, our first bit of actual damage there because I'm not being careful. Um, we got some kindling, we'll leave that area. You can you can zoom down to any tile, by the way, you're not really limited, but um, the game does a good job of not wasting your time. It'll let you know, hey, there's something here to collect. If you want to, like, you know, spend some time searching around for some herbs, you totally can. Um, otherwise, like, a lot of tiles, it'll just, like, you know, roam around. They're just kind of there to serve as, like... Oh, I guess there's maybe more there I could have collected. Um, they're, they're there to serve as, like, an arena in case there's a creature hanging around. Uh, we can collect some berries. It'll generally tell you once you've collected everything... So if it doesn't tell you, I there may in fact be more more here to collect, but I, I might I might be wrong about that actually because I'm not seeing anything else. 
almost get some like kind of soul ash vibes from this game is this another dungeon i don't know what this is but it's kind of like a ruin ah there is something here oh yeah yeah yeah. i i did explore this zone i i guess i played more of this game than i thought um because you know not everything is going to be a surprise to me i'm sorry i couldn't capture some of my like first impressions on in a series or something but um i'm sure there's there's plenty of surprises left so these guys it looks like they're blind uh they're not blind they just they they indicate the little icon indicated that they couldn't see me so if i step to the right and then sneak and then wait well that guy clearly saw me dodged he broke through my armor i'm gonna back up a bit so that i can uh, get my armor back i could i suppose i could shoot oh i keep pressing f i'm so used to caves of cud uh f being like fire uh and in fact i keep pressing it ranged is r in this game there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, but it's going to take some time for me to get used to it. Now, these guys are, are fun. I, I love the almost like turn-based meets real-time, not real-time strategy, but like real-time meets turn-based uh, kind of interplay in this game. So you'll see this guy uh, is a turret, and he's actually pointed up towards there. He'll do a lot of damage if I'm not careful, but on his turn, he has to like spend a little bit of time to rotate towards me. So if I move towards him, and he also, uh, he, he can't fire every turn. So even though he's like pointed at me, he could probably do some damage. Uh, he, he, he just fired, so he has to wait for his cooldown. So I'm going to move and kind of like kite him a little bit. Wait for the, the shot, and then I'm going to do some smacks. Then when he's pointed at me, I'm going to move to the right, kite him, and then wait for him to make his shot. Well, he did get it, though. He did get it. But there's there's the other shot and then I move around and then he just did his another shot So you can kind of oh, yeah, that was oh, that's a, that's what it's called. It's, a, it's called our poise I am doing a really piss poor job here Ow, 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 ow We do have some um, Potions Okay that hurt a lot. Um, let's have a look at our... Let's let's maybe take a potion. We have a large potion of healing. This will heal 450. We don't necessarily need to waste something like that. Do we have something a little bit less? Area healing technology from Cyber Rune era in the form of a translucent white, a faceted stone filled with swirling motes of dark blue considered an invaluable tool by those who follow... Okay. So this has says uses left to five... These are very valuable. I don't know if I want to necessarily use those. Um, I'm not yet sure or clear on like what is good. When do I want to use something? When is something like like never use it basically? Um, I could use a large potion of healing, but I actually kind of want to like just cool it for now. I don't have to finish this rune, by the way. I don't have to really like hang out here. Ouch. Resist stun. Dodged. Critical hit. I want to back away and let our poise... This is what I mean by the game is actually quite forgiving in combat because we can back up and let our poise regenerate. No ammunition. Okay, I'm going to need some more rocks at some point. Um, and then we won't take any, like, actual damage. So as soon as we've, like... As soon as our poise is broken, we can actually back off and let it regenerate. Now, I'm sure that things are going to become tougher later on. Like, I'm sure that there are going to be enemies that, like, do not let us escape in that in that way. Um, but for now, I'm, I'm kind of content with this forgiving combat. You have picked up a Rosetta. Use it to learn the nature of one identify, unidentified object in your pack. Okay, so we got, like, basically a scroll... Now, I do recall I, I came to this room before and there was exactly this situation where there was a a door there that I couldn't open and I, no matter how much I searched around, there was no, like, pressure plate anywhere that I could find. Um, and I even looked for, like, false walls uh, around here to try and, like, open it up. And I don't know, some I guess it just, it just works out that way. But that's okay. So we'll leave... 
this. Uh, I'm not just arbitrarily moving on the map, by the way. I, I am actually moving towards a town. And uh, we'll probably end our first episode here in the town. I love the, the palettes, by the way. They use really good use of, like, palettes, um, like, color palettes to, to kind of identify certain areas. This place is filled to the brim with stores and uh, a church as well, um, but like a lot of information. We can, we can find out a lot from this place and also sell our stuff. Um, I haven't yet really figured out crafting yet, so that's something I want to learn over the course of this series. But, uh, you know, if Scraps of Chitin says, but fair, uh, fetch a fair price in most towns, then I'm going to take that as red. Um, we sell those. We have some bolts, but we also have scraps of fur. Tailors craft them into warm cloaks useful in colder climes. Um, so I imagine we want to keep something like that. Scraps of ancient metal. Useful if one wishes to repair a Sibirun machine. I mean, I, that sounds useful, so I'm not going to sell that. Uh, and I'm not going to sell my lifestone, obviously. We have some moon saps. We could do some potion brewing, but, you know, very much in a similar sense, I don't know how to do that yet. Um, I could go and, you know, start worshipping a god. <clears throat> Even though I am dreamless, I have the option of being neutral. And that's uh, something they kind of, like, very much draw attention to. It's like, hey, uh, you don't have a dream, therefore you have the option of, like, kind of picking your god. Welcome to Moon Upon Thos. Um, okay. Whose path do you follow? Path. Yes. Of which god do you dream? Oh, are you dreamless? I am dreamless. Oh, worry not. A dream may still come. And if not, a life of balance is noble. Here, I have a gift for you. It may help guide you. <clears throat> devotional tier. So they give you a uh, devotional tier, and then you can use that to start praying to one of the gods. Um, let's have a look at balance. Indeed, my job is to remain neutral and support the will of our Archon. So we have uh, Guinevere here. Hello, how goeth thine day? Fair or foul? Foul. Foul? I must apologize. I meant foul, of course. I be surprised you picked up on that. Must be my accent. So what if I type like dream to this guy? If you don't have a dream, you don't have a god. So um, yeah, I mean, you can use uh, keywords from like other dialogues to kind of like pro probe other NPCs, no response. They don't necessarily always have something to say on the matter though. So, and here are the various different churches to various different gods and we can learn a little bit about them. Lords of Dust. Yes, they are always looking for keen minds. The world is full of wonders. Wonders. The Sibirun left many great works. Our brethren wander the world seeking them out. Um, okay, Sibirun. Who, those who ruled this world before the Cataclysm, though their genius could not save them. So we have uh, kind of like artifact seekers. Then we have over here the wrong place. You do not seem entertaining. Oh, you're probably better off somewhere else entertaining. Can you juggle, dance, sing, look a fabulous? Or perhaps you have wit. Fabulous. My face is painted for the gods and I can sing all 12 verses of the Almara, but then I doubt you've ever heard of it. Uh, actually, it's quite a tedious poem. I should probably kill the author at some point for aesthetic reasons, of course. Aesthetic. All life in one little word, huh? Oh, but then... Oh, my God. Yeah, forgive that. Um, but then, nothing really means anything more than the attention we give it. So we have a, basically a jester god. And then, uh, welcome to the temple of the way of, the, of all blind angels. Do you dream of them or are you dreamless? Dreamless. No matter, they will still accept your worship. They will even impart their gifts. Gifts. We have been granted great endurance, as well as a certain sensitivity. Uh, sensitivity. Though I am blind, I can see you. Or rather, I see your life force. Yeah. 
It shimmers like a host of moon moths, quite beautiful. You will see it too if you follow our way. Devote yourself to the angels, and with time, their boons will be yours. Okay. And then we have over here. Do you come to worship Our Lady of the Sanguine Moon? I swear to God. Okay, hopefully we're out of fire alarm zone. Uh, do you come to worship Our Lady of the Sanguine Moon? Uh, let's see. Their moon lends Caldera such a beautiful tint, does it not? Tint, huh? Uh, like the blood which nourishes us. Blood, huh? Do you dream of them, child? Dream. No? Well, maybe in time. Perhaps tonight, if her way is in your blood? Okay. A little weird. And then we have the wolf god. Come out into the clean air and parlay. Clean air. This city would have us all choke on smoke and stale air. We belong outside like our kin creatures. The wolves, of course. They are honest, loyal, and honor not, but that which is strong. If you are not strong, you are a burden. It is no fit way to live. The great forest wolf would have us remember this. Uh, the wolf is ruler of all forests in Caldera, and a harsh mistress. However, they ask nothing of us that strength cannot overcome. Strength... It is one of the wolf's boons, a gift to those who devote their lives to them. Now, I believe, um, how do I... I can't remember the button I need to press in order to access... Might, uh, might be character? Nope. There's a basically a god button. Notes, maybe? Dreams. Yarrow, shed note. Tutorials, book, speaker. No. None of that. Um, inventory, maybe? Nope. Okay, well, there is a god button. It might be that I have to uh, give up my tier of devotion in order to uh, see um, what the gods offer. But we're not going to be doing that just yet. I would, uh, you know, I'd like to reserve my, uh, you know, my choice for now. The apothecary asks, what may I do for you? Well, um, can we sell anything probably we shouldn't let's go ahead and see if we can buy some stuff i'm just wondering if maybe we can um actually get some potions made uh we don't have a lot of money we have 275 but that might be enough to buy a weapon of sorts uh or maybe i should just i don't know how to access my gods is it g R, no, obviously it's not R. Let's have a look at our options for the time being. Help. Uh, exchange. Character, notes, map. Oh, gods. Oh, it is G. Um, not available at this time. Okay. Okay, well, uh, balance. Let's, uh, job, it is to remain neutral. Yes, the other priests bicker and squabble. It, it achieves nothing. Neutrality allows us to see the world with a broader vision. Nothing. Indeed, to be dreamless is to know doubt, but also wisdom. Certainty breeds dogmatism. Okay, what I might do is we're going to go to this um, tier. Where is that tier of something? Devotional tier. Um, we can give it to one of the gods. It doesn't necessarily mean we are committed to that god, as far as I know. But I might be wrong about that. So I, I wouldn't necessarily want to do something I can't turn back from. So we'll leave it for now. I, I would like to get some equipment. The problem is, and I'm going to show the, showcase this in just a mo, um, is that equipment is ba <laughs> based on your stats. I wonder if I can, can I use this anvil? Doesn't look like I can, actually. I wonder if I can do some crafting in my inventory. Doesn't look like I can either. Okay, so we'll just talk to our weaponsmith here. So if I was to buy, like, say, a Cutlass, its strength required is a five. So we would need five strength. But we can only get five strength if we are, you know, good with our gods. Um, and, uh, you know, have gained something from that. 
so i'm not exactly sure yet how to progress um i'll be doing a batch of videos so i'll probably learn the answer to this before this episode goes up um but you know feel free to uh, add whatever you want into the comments we'll uh we can hire a cell sword i don't necessarily want to do that yet um but it might be something i want to do in the future those are locked these are all locked uh, we can also like leave this island. Um, there's actually a boat here that we could we could uh, sail to Barrow Lynn for 122 guineas. Um, I think what I'd like to do is just kind of adventure for a bit and uh, gain some more stuff and come back and sell and you know buy a sword and figure things out for the time being. And uh, we'll see how this goes. But uh, thank you for joining me on this first episode. Um, I really do hope that you will join me for this. I don't know how long the series will be. Um, it's not necessarily a super... I don't know how long this game is, but uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll definitely want to do a couple of playthroughs, so we'll see how long-lasting the series is. But um, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning about it and, and, you know, playing it. But anyway, um, I'll see you guys next time. If you l enjoyed this video, definitely hit the like button. Consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. And I already said that. Goodbye. Goodbye.